So one of our members recently posted a question in the group and asked for my perspective on it, which I'd like to share right now. So let me give you some backstory. She's in a relationship with a man for about six to seven weeks. It appears that he's a great guy in every sense. Um, he's monogamous with her. They're exclusively uh, seeing each other. Uh, he helped. He was very romantic during Valentine's Day. Not very romantic, but it was somewhat romantic on Valentine's Day. He's an acts of service kind of guy. And she says that uh, he's really perfect, except he's not very verbally expressive or emotionally expressive in the relationship. And her question was centered around, are they dating or are they in a relationship? And how to go about asking where, they, where this relationship stands. Like, in other words, where is this relationship going? And she wants some feedback on that. So I thought that would be a great topic to talk about today. So most of you know some of my content centered around what I call the users, the spenders, and the growers. The users, the spenders, and the growers. Now, users are people who are in it for the short run or for their own benefit. In other words, the relationship is all on their terms. These are players, love bombers. Uh, these are entitled people, gold diggers, that sort of thing. They're the users. They're using people. Now, the growers and builders are the ones who actually genuinely want partnership with someone. They're evaluating this person to determine if it makes sense to be in partnership with this person. Those are the growers and the builders. And yet the vast majority of people are what I call spenders. What they are is they, they seek companionship, connection, and sex. They, they want to spend time with you for those three things without any real um, forethought on commitment and partnership. Okay, so why does this happen in midlife? She's a woman who's in her 60s. He's 55 years old. Okay, when you think back in your 20s and 30s, the pre predominant reason to mate with another person was to get married, make babies, and raise a family. Okay, that was the reason why you, you partnered with someone. The real challenge for most men and women is they don't know what partnership looks like when it's maybe their second or third significant relationship. Given that roughly 75% uh, of singles over 45 years old are divorced, we've had one significant relationship, and in many cases there's been a divorce and another significant relationship or some short-term relationships uh, that happen in their lives. And what's challenging for most human beings is, especially as they're in their uh, second or third chapter of their lives, a really third or fourth chapter in their lives, and I'm looking at chapters in 20 year segments, is that they don't know what partnership looks like. Okay, so that being said, what can she do in this particular case? What should she say? Well, I think first and foremost, I think it'd be important to ask this person. In other words, pull yourself back from this relationship and ask yourself, if he isn't the one, do you wanna know about it today? Or do you want to know about it when you're even more and more invested in this person? Okay? Ask yourself that. Do you want to know about it today? Because the fear of what I'm about to suggest causes women to hope that something will change. Okay? So, six, seven weeks in, I would clearly want to know what does commitment mean to you and what does commitment look like for you? And what type of committed relationship are you looking for? What type of committed relationship are you looking for? What does commitment mean to you? What does it look like for you? What type of commitment? Now, what I mean to say type of commitment, well, monogamy and exclusivity, meaning monogamy is not having sex with other people. Exclusivity means not actively seeking to date new people is one form of commitment. Okay. Another form of commitment is merging finances together. Another form of commitment is living together. Another form of commitment is getting married together. Another form of commitment is true teamwork with one another. And just because he put up uh, some gift that you gave him on his wall isn't necessarily teamwork. What is real teamwork as we get into, for those of us that are uh, in our late 40s, 50s, or even 60s. What does teamwork look like? 
In my particular case with my beloved, it was teamwork meant we, we moved in together. We share expenses together. That's a level of teamwork. She helps out in my professional capacity. She helps me shoot videos. We talk, I help her with her family. I help her with health issues. These are levels of teamwork beyond the surface. Now, did we know this in six or seven weeks? You know, actually in our case, yeah, we knew very quickly that we wanted to explore a relationship that was partnership oriented, that we were going to grow together. We actually didn't really begin the relationship without that agreement going in. So now you're six or seven weeks in and you want to ask these tough questions. Well, he might simply say, I don't know what I want. See, folks, I didn't choose my relationship with Marie under the guise that I didn't know what I wanted. I was crystal clear on what I wanted. See, when someone's crystal clear, then they make the choice of who they want to invest in. And I made the choice to invest in her, and thankfully she made the choice to invest in me. See, in this particular case, what you might be experiencing is what's known as a casual relationship. And what it means is a casual relationship, again, is monogamy, it's exclusivity, it's companionship, connection, and sex, without any real direction. That's a casual relationship. Now you might be thinking, well, it's only six or seven weeks in. Yeah, it's still casual because it wasn't established right from the get-go. I want you to think about this. Back in the day, you know, it used to be not less than a hundred years ago that if two people wanted to have sex, they had to get married. Why? Mostly because there was a consequence of having sex with someone that wasn't your husband, meaning if you had children together, there was a consequence to that. But now we don't have those consequences because of birth control and whatnot. And certainly sex is something anybody can, you know, we are free to have sex whenever we want. At the same time, when you become physically intimate with someone, you bond with this person. So shouldn't it make sense that we have deeper conversations in the early stage of dating right from the get-go? before you actually begin that bonding process. So you're six or seven weeks in, what do you do about this? You have a real sit, real heart to heart. You lay your cards on the table, say, look, I genuinely care about you. And I find myself, you know, becoming attached to you. And at the same time, I don't want to get attached to a person who doesn't want the same things as I do. So the type of relationship I'm looking for is a relationship where we spend three or four days and nights a week together, doing shared activities, hobbies, mutual interests, spending time with family and friends, traveling together, teamwork building skills, both in our personal and our professional life, intimacy, both physical and emotional intimacy that leads to either moving in together or getting married. That is what I want. What is it that you want? Doesn't mean you have to want what I want. I just want to know what you want. And if it's not the same thing, maybe we should walk away from this. And a lot of men are winging it. They're winging it. They're winging it. They're like, I don't know what I want. Well, those men who don't know what they want make terrible partners. Not to mention those men where the ground underneath them doesn't feel solid, meaning that their life doesn't feel solid, so they can't fully support a fully committed relationship. Folks, it's incumbent upon you to, to actually speak up to speak up. And I'm going to ask Marie to stop doing what she's doing because I hear that noise and it's uh, affecting me right now. <laughs> you guys can't hear it, but I could. So thank you for saying you're sorry. My point is, folks, it's incumbent upon you. You can't leave it up to the guy to know what you want. You have to tell him what you want in relationship if you're going to have any chance of actually having this relationship have any legs. And when I say tell him what you want, it's, it's more of tell him what you want in the, first off, have clarity on what you want. Have clarity on the type of relationship you want. That's first and foremost, have that clarity. And second, describe that to the other person and see if you're on the same page with them. That's what I did with my beloved. We agreed that we wouldn't explore. We weren't going to do this unless we were going to explore a relationship together. We were crystal clear. Now, I led the charge in this particular case. I happen to know what I want. You have to know what you want, express it, and then see if they're on the same page. And if you're not, then you make a decision. Do you want to invest in a person that may not be there in the long run? 
but Jonathan, we're just dating. We don't know each other too well. Folks, here's the bottom line. It doesn't, it, well, first off, it takes about 40 hours to get to know someone to know if you really want to explore a relationship with you. It takes about 100 hours to build trust with a person, face-to-face -face time to build trust, and it takes about 200 hours to really experience this person as a good friend. Okay, that's about the amount of time it takes. By the way, this isn't the world according to Jonathan. I heard that from Jay Shetty, uh, who wrote the book uh, Eight Rules of Love, I believe it's called. So, if you if you too if he if you've spent forty hours together, he knows whether or not he wants to explore a relationship with you. Okay, the next sixty hours is: Are you going to build enough trust? to know that you want partnership with this person. And it's better that you're on the same page versus investing in someone who doesn't want what you want. That's my two cents anyway. So coming back to the question, hey, you lay your cards on the table now. Would you rather know now that it's a relationship worth investing in? Or would you rather know, would you rather want to know now if this person isn't going to be a long-term partner? Or would you rather figure that out six months later after you've spent time together, you've been used, and then you're back out there trying it all over again. Anyways, that's my invitation for y'all. All right, I hope you found value in this video. If you do, please post a comment below. I'd like to hear your thoughts. As always, uh, if you find value in the group, please tell your friends about Midlife Love Mastery. Send them to my website, jonathanasley.com. Have them click the group coaching button so they can join our fantastic group. And I'm going to sign off this video as I always do. First off, giving myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Barrick of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm asking you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow. Give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye now.